Hello, I'm Dr. Anil Gurey. I'm a consultant at Fertility Courses, Fertility Plus and Homerton Fertility Center. So today I'm going to talk to you about whether combining vaginal and rectal progesterone makes a difference in frozen embryo replacement cycles. And this was a research question which was published on RBM Online in this paper and it is probably the first study that has been done on this topic. So let's go for an introduction and look at what progesterone levels do you need to be able to have a good pregnancy rates. Usually this is taken from oocyte donation, vaginally administered progesterone and utrogestan used 400 milligram 12 hourly and in 2017 and this is one of the first studies that came out and it suggested that if the pregnancy rate declined if progesterone levels were less than 35 nanomole per liter and if they went above 35 nanomole per liter then the progesterone levels and uh, then the pregnancy rates were better and again a cohort study was done in 2018 which showed very similar findings that if the progesterone levels went below 35 nanomole per liter and then your chances of pregnancy seem to go down. So there seems to be in, in almost in another study with 529 cycles and there seemed to be an optimum range of progesterone and they thought that in HRT cycles the optimal rate was probably 28 nanomole per liter anything below that would give a lower pregnancy rate. So let's go down to a few things about progesterone. So let's look at the basics of progesterone. In these studies, 50% of patients using standard vaginal progesterone had low progesterone levels. Again, when micronized progesterone was used, 50% of patients had low progesterone less than 10 nanogram per ml. So again, what is coming out is that Probably in some patients, you are seeing even with a high doses of vaginal progesterone, progesterone levels being low. So progesterone can be used rectally, it can be used vaginally, orally, subcutaneous and intramuscular. Crinone given twice induces a steady state of concentration of around 37 nanomole per litre. And steady states uh, of progesterone seem to be achieved after about 24 hours of administration. Now, rectal progesterone is not widely used, and a study did find that similar progesterone levels are there whether you use rectal or vaginal progesterone. Now, one of the things which we don't know, and again, I, if you see one of the papers which I did present, it seems that while, you know, vaginal progesterone does not increase serum progesterone levels across the plane, it may increase endometrial progesterone levels. And what we think is that the endometrial progesterone levels may be different to the progesterone levels that we see in blood. So let's look at this study. March 2018 to April 2019, frozen blastocyst, 277 patients who started on the HRT protocol. Six milligram of estradiol valerate from day two of period, ultrasound 12 to 19 days of treatment. Endometrial thickness should be more than seven millimeter Crinone gel used 12 hourly or you know, rectal or vaginal uh, preparation and blood samples 1 to 8 hours after progesterone administration, morning of uh, between 9 and 11. And if pregnancy tests were positive, 7 week vaginal progesterone continued till around 10 weeks. Questionnaire was sent to patients. So let's have a look at uh, the results and we see that when progesterone levels were less than 28 nanomole per liter, pregnancy rates or ongoing pregnancy rates were slightly lower. 
On the other hand, if progesterone levels went greater than 45 nanomole per liter, then pregnancy rates also went lower compared to probably what they thought was the optimum of between 28 to 45 nanomole per liter, where ongoing pregnancy rates were the highest and pregnancy loss seemed to be the lowest. So when you have a look at this uh, graph, it clearly indicates that you had a middle section of progesterone levels where optimum pregnancy rates were seen. But that's again uh, an opinion that comes from their paper. Questionnaire was sent to 91 patients and patients did complain of rectal discomfort, they also complained of vaginal discomfort and abdominal discomfort and, and progesterone does give those symptoms. And 33% complaints of flutulence increase after embryo transfer. Now, what do we see from this study and what can we take home as a message? That 10% of patients had a low progesterone in a 2 by 2 regimen compared to 25% in the previous study which was done. Combined vaginal and rectal progesterone revealed a non-linear relationship of serum progesterone and pregnancy. Low pregnancy rates were seen under 28 nanomole per liter and greater than 45 nanomole per liter. What we do know is that a low progesterone levels in a hormone replacement therapy cycle tends to have a lower pregnancy rate in, in short in a frozen cycle. 50% of patients on vaginal progesterone seem to have low progesterone levels. And we don't know whether doubling the dose of progesterone may help in this case. Or is there a ceiling effect that after giving a certain amount of progesterone, does serum progesterone level, level stop increasing? So if you look at this study, the number of uh, cases of high progesterone were low. Different modes of deliveries have different cutoff. And in the current study, adding rectal progesterone to vaginal progesterone seemed to increase the serum progesterone level from 24 nanomole to 41 nanomole per liter. And it seems that in this study, the optimal dose was between 28 and 45 nanomole per liter. So let's again have a look at nature and, and what happens to progesterone in nature. So natural progesterone comes from the corpus luteum and it increases from the earlier luteal phase to the mid luteal phase. And that's why we say a day 21 progesterone rise. The peak seems to be between 30 and 60 nanomole per liter. And in 1982, they saw in nature that no pregnancies happened if the progesterone levels were less than 27 and higher than 50 nanomole per liter. But again, a very old study. In contrast, others have demonstrated pregnancies at similar progesterone levels. In HRT cycles, things seem to be different. Also, what we know is that the progesterone levels do not peak in time for implantation uh, but the maximum concentration seems to be there after one day of administration. So what can you do different? Uh, can you try and do something different to improve the chance of pregnancy? Again, Alsberg said, why don't we give more vaginal progesterone? And the live birth rate seemed to again increase slightly. Again, in 2019, another study was done which said you increase pro vaginal progesterone levels from 200 to 400 and that did not increase the live birth rate. Again, the question comes up is, are we reaching a maximum that vaginally progesterone can be absorbed? Now, what happens with rectal progesterone? It causes a rapid absorption. The high levels are obtained after two hours. Progesterone levels peak after eight hours and then go through a gradual decline. If you want to maintain stable levels of progesterone, then you need it every 12 hours. So if you want to reduce your low progesterone levels, 
I think the study says that combine the vaginal and the rectal progesterone and you may be able to increase serum progesterone levels. Again, if you give grenone every 12 hours, a steady state of progesterone is seen within 24 hours of 37 nanomole per liter, provided adequate absorption takes place. And also, there are large individual variations in progesterone. The study had a weakness that there was no control group, only crinone was used, only one blood sample was done on the day of the pregnancy test. And the question again comes is, does using vaginal and rectal progesterone improve pregnancy rates? So you know, what is the summary here? And in short, what do we want to say? We know that serum progesterone levels in a frozen embryo replacement cycle or a donor replacement cycle is essential. And we think now that probably there seems to be a cutoff below which pregnancy rates do not increase. The question is, where does that level come? What we don't know is, is there a ceiling? Which means, do pregnancy rates go down when certain progesterone levels are reached? Next, we do know that there is a variation in absorption and that changes from individuals to individuals. So the question now comes up is that if there is that variation between 10 and 20% of patients, then do we move to an injectable progesterone? Especially in these cases where you get a far more steady serum progesterone levels. Finally, those answers are yet not answered. And I think time will tell us whether using subcutaneous progesterone in a frozen cycle and achieving steady states of progesterone may give us a better result. Thank you very much and it's great to be back.